here we go. Look what's coming up this week. In the treacle people, the boggarts are caught on the hop. Tilly, Tom and Tiny do a spot of rain dancing. There's more fun and games in the magic house. Mossop builds his own helicopter in the Riddlers. Rosie and Jim trot off to a Jim Carner, and Wizardora's confused. But coming up next, today's story from Old Bear is called The Play. Take your seats, please. If you can't see me for dust, use Mr. Sheen with anti-static dust guard. The polish that keeps dust away for up to three days. Mr. Sheen keeps dust away longer. I'm just as choosy with what goes on my hair as with what goes in my column. Pantene, for hair that looks so healthy it shines. Right, lads, come here. Come on. Yes, here he is on the board. Just look at that power. Look at the energy this boy has. Nothing can stop him. William, stop her. Gotta go, lads. Easy. Into the early bath. Oh, that's great. Oh, this boy has just never been fitter. Come here. Dogs love Maraboon. And the goodness and nourishment of Maribone jelly is only in Pal. They think it's all over. Oh, it is now. Pal, for active life. Need of drama starts Sunday the 11th of July on BBC One. Vlad the Impaler. Seizing a burger. And the Hurricanes are only part of the winning team here on CITV this week. There's strong airfield support from Budgie. And I'm sure there'll be some good dribbling in the Transylvania pet shop. If you're looking for talent, there's plenty on display in Crisscross. And there's solid teamwork from Sylvester and Tweety Pie, Are You Afraid of the Dark, and Bimble's hey, Bucket. This looks really good. So if you're looking for winners, don't go on a wild goose chase. Stick with CITV all this week. Now here's old Bear. Take your seats, please, for the play. Please read us a story, old bear. We'll all gather round. Dear old bear, sit in your favorite chair. We'll sit all around, all around, dear old bear. It was a warm summer's day, and all the toys were sitting under a tree in the garden. They were watching Bramwell and Jolly trying to make an old curtain into a hammock and were waiting for Old Bear to read them a story. Now this story is about Goldilocks and the Three Bears, began Old Bear, opening the book. Who's Goldilocks? asked Little Bear. She's a little girl, said Old Bear, sighing. Little Bear already knew who Goldilocks was because he'd heard the story lots of times before. The Three Bears lived in a cottage in the middle of a wood, Old Bear went on. I like this one, interrupted Little Bear, especially the bit about the porridge. We'll never get to that bit if you don't listen to the story, said Old Bear. Now, one day Goldilocks was walking in the wood when she came to a little house. Can I have some porridge? asked Little Bear. You don't want porridge on a hot sunny day, said Duck. Porridge is to warm you up. Little Bear pretended to shiver. I'm feeling a bit chilly, he said. Just here, he added rubbing his tummy. Bramble Brown smiled. Well, I was going to make lunch soon anyway, so perhaps we could have porridge today. Can I help? asked Little Bear. No, you stay here and listen to the rest of the story, said Bramble. I won't be long. The toys settled down again as Old Bear told them about Goldilocks arriving at the house of the three bears. They were just listening to the last page of the book when Bramble returned. He was carrying a tray laden with a steaming dish of porridge and a pile of bowls and spoons. Come and have some porridge, he called to Jolly. Um, I, I want to get this up first, replied Jolly. I I've only fixed one side to the trees. Looks like a theatre curtain hanging like that, said Bramwell. So it does, said Old Bear. Perhaps we could put on a play. What's a play? asked Little Bear. A sort of moving story, said Old Bear. Some people pretend to do things that are in a story, and the others watch them. Ooh, said Little Bear. That sounds fun. Can I be in the play? Only if it's about someone very small, muttered Duck. Why don't we do the story Old Bear has just been reading, said Rabbit. 
That has a baby bear in it. And the bears all eat porridge, said Little Bear. Actually, they don't, said Duck. They go out to leave it to cool down. They only eat a little bit, and Baby Bear doesn't get any at all. I'm not being a bear who has no food, said Little Bear. Well, you could have some before we start the play, said Bramble, spooning some porridge into a bowl and passing it to Little Bear. While Little Bear ate his porridge, the others went off to the shed to look for the things they'd need for the play. In a dusty corner, they found two big boxes to use as the rooms in the house. Some middle-sized ones for making a table and beds, and smaller ones to make into chairs. I'll bring things that might be useful in the play, said Duck, piling odds and ends into one of the smaller boxes. When they arrived back to where the curtain hung between the trees, they pushed the biggest boxes into position. Hmm, said Bramble thoughtfully. I think we'll cut a hole here and here for the front door and the window and one there to go into the bedroom. Old Bear and Little Bear were busy making the furniture to go into the house of the three bears. Who are going to be the Mummy and Daddy Bears? asked Little Bear. I'll be Daddy Bear, said Old Bear. And perhaps Bramble would like to be Mummy Bear. You can wear an apron, he added. Bramble found a big piece of flowery material in the box of bits. He cut a hole for his head and two strips to tie the apron round his middle. This looks just right, he said, as Rabbit tied a bow for him behind his back. Lovely, said Old Bear. Now, how can we make Little Bear look like a baby? Well, as he's got porridge down his front already, said Bramble, perhaps a bib would be a good idea. I don't need a bib, protested Little Bear. It's just for the play, said Old Bear. You can take it off at the end. Bramble made Little Bear a tiny white bib and tied it round his neck. There, he said. Now you have a costume. You look like a real actor. Are we ready to start? asked Jolly. We haven't got a Goldilocks yet, said Duck. She has to eat the porridge and break a chair. I'll be Goldilocks, said Little Bear. You can't be Goldilocks and Baby Bear, said Rabbit. I'll be Goldilocks. I haven't had any porridge yet. Rabbit pulled a yellow curtain fringe out of the box and draped it over his head. How's that, he said. Lovely, said Old Bear. Now all we need is an audience. Ruff, could you go and tell everyone we're ready to begin? Ruff bounced off to fetch the other toys. When he returned, they all settled down on the blanket. As soon as they were seated, Jolly grabbed the edge of the curtain and trotted across to pull it back. And there, sitting up at the table, were the three bears, all ready to eat their porridge. This porridge is getting cold, said Little Bear tasting his first spoonful. Shh, said Bramble. Pretend it's too hot. We're supposed to leave it to cool down. Little Bear blew hard on his bowl. <sighs> this porridge is burning hot. Let's go for a walk while it gets colder. The three bears got up from their chairs and went outside. Almost immediately, there was a rat-tat-tat on the door, and there in the doorway stood Rabbit, wearing his yellow curtain fringe hair. Is anybody there? He called in his Goldilocks voice. But as the door was open, he could see that no one was in, so he bounded into the room, tripped over Daddy Bear's chair, and landed headfirst in the biggest bowl of porridge. Help! He cried, scraping the contents of the bowl off his face. This porridge is too sticky! He jumped onto the next chair to try Mummy Bear's porridge. And this is too lumpy! he added as he dangled his curtain fringe in it by mistake. Finally, he took a flying leap onto Little Bear's chair and squashed it completely flat. Oops, he said. I'll have to stand up to eat the porridge now. When Rabbit had eaten up every bit of Little Bear's porridge, he yawned. Oh, I think I'm ready for bed now, he said, and turned to go through the door between the kitchen and the bedroom. As soon as he'd left the room, the three bears came back. Who's been tripping over my chair and spilling my porridge? said Old Bear. And who's been sitting on my chair and dropping things in my porridge? said Bramble, pulling a piece of curtain fringe out of his bowl. And who has completely squashed my chair and eaten my porridge all up? said Little Bear. 
Never mind about the porridge, said Old Bear. It's time we all went for a sleep. But we only just got up, said Little Bear quietly, as he trotted along behind Bramble. It was Old Bear who reached his bed first. Who's been getting porridge all over my bed, he said. And who's been muddling up my bed, said Bramble. And who's bouncing up and down on my bed, cried Little Bear. Lie down, Rabbit. You're meant to be Goldilocks fast asleep, he added crossly. But all that porridge has made me really bouncy, protested Rabbit. I don't feel tired now. Well, you're supposed to be frightened of the three bears and run away, said Old Bear. Oh, I can do that, said Rabbit. He waved his arms about and tried to look frightened. Then, with a leap and a bound, he bounced straight through the open window. The audience clapped and cheered. Wonderful, called Ruff, as the three bears came to the front of the box to bow. Rabbit came round to join them, and when they'd finished bowing, Jolly marched across with the curtain. That was very good, he said, popping his head round the curtain. Do you think I could have my porridge now? Bramwell looked in the dish. Uh, I'd better go and make some more, he said. The little bear has eaten most of this. Well, I don't feel hungry any more, said Little Bear, yawning. But all that acting has made me very tired. He climbed into Baby Bear's shoebox bed and snuggled down. Can we have another story? He asked Old Bear sleepily. Well, just a quick one, said Old Bear. Then we'd better put everything away. Old Bear picked up another storybook. Once upon a time, he began, but when he looked down, the baby bear was already fast asleep. A wonderful show, which will put a song in everyone's hearts. <laughs> There's plenty to sing about tomorrow on CITV. Zitbag puts on a Broadway musical in Transylvania Pet Shop. And there's a talent competition at Stansfield Academy in Crisscross. Plus, there's Sylvester, Tweety, and Budgie. That's all tomorrow in a much bigger CITV than today. See you there. Next on Yorkshire, live action from Villa Park, Scotland, take on Holland in Euro 96. Baby Bell, the little cheese that likes to get out. Round here, we're all fans of shredded wheat, because it's got that taste you only get from 100% whole wheat with nothing added. In fact, my pat says hot milk brings out the wheaty taste. May not Pete? We dig in while the weed's good and crunchy. He's a chip of the old block, that one. Shredded wheat and bite-sized too. There is no better cereal. Come on, you lot. Get into a group. Hey, Dad, do I look all right? Like a film star, love. Yeah, Frankenstein. You better watch out for those steps. Jeff! Quiet, the film's rolling. It's so <laughs> steak! <laughs> Looks like Beetle needs a cup of PG tips. You can really taste the difference in a cup of PG. Tender tips make tastier tea. Uh, this tea deserves an Oscar. Dad, is this film going to be an X? No, a PG. <laughs> I once ended up feeding dried dog food to the birds. My dogs didn't like the taste, did you? Did you? But since feeding them pedigree chum complete, they never leave any. They love it. Ricky! Our vets and nutritionists at Waltham know taste is important, so dogs get all the nutrients they need. That's why we based every nutritious mouthful in delicious meat juices. Now the only thing they ever leave is me, miles behind. Pedigree Chum complete. Top breeders recommend it.
So you can enjoy your golden crumbly daily digestive as close to freshly baked as possible, McVitie's has developed a way of keeping them fresher, even when you've opened the pack, with this really easily releasable, with this really easily receal, with this really easily... It's got a sticky thing that makes it stay shut. Thank you. Here's a pack I opened earlier. Mmm, still deliciously crash and crumbly. McVitie's, you have to go a long, long way to bake a better biscuit. <laughs> Just how much fun is a Muller Kids Corner yogurt? We're here with Kevin to find out. I'm putting the helmet on Kevin now. They found the bodies of two people in an upstairs bedroom. He's found the irresistible. Boy, that strawberry flavor looks good. Hit. Fun! <laughs> Kids Corner yogurt with a surprise toy. Two people in the house were, but they say formal identification. You take the money and run. No, no. You could win, you could lose. So take your pick with Des O'Connor tonight at 8.30 on Yorkshire. Tonight's early evening news is at the later time of 6.30, and that's followed at 6.45 by regional news. And the reason? Scotland versus Holland in Euro 96.